Hello there, good to see you again. Uh, well, whatever else is going wrong, the weather is just stunning. Um, hopefully um, it's still okay uh, when you're hearing this in wherever you are. Um, I think it's the weekend where things are supposed to take a very definite cold temperature turn and uh, the uh, the mercury on the thermometer is supposed to go way down. But um, it's a really, really nice day. Um, I think that might have something to do with it, but well, well let's just start. Um, this is Philippians chapter 4. Um, the way Paul works when he writes a letter is normally the same. The letters are split into half, two halves. And the first half is what I guess you might call theology. This is who you are in Christ. This is what you get in Christ. This is what you're supposed to do in Christ. This is... Uh, this is the faith. This is walking with God. And then in the second half, you get, you get the index finger. You, you bunch of numpties. That, look, what are you doing? This, what, 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 do? And there's all that. So this is Philippians chapter 4. <laughs> we've had chapter 1. We've had chapter 2. So now we're into the second half. And as they say, it's not just a game of football. It's a game of two halves. So this is chapter 4, and he's very specific and uh, well hear what God's got to say to you this morning I entreat you Odia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord they've fallen out I don't know if they're in lockdown together in the one house but there's definitely uh, they've had a tiff yes I ask you also true companion think that's the person he's writing to. He's certainly got somebody in mind in the actual church in Philippi. Help these women who have laboured side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose name, whose names are in the book of life. They're definitely Christians as far as Paul's concerned. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. There's a big fight. There's a tiff. He's giving a specific, personalised, named finger-wagging to a whole group of people, but to two individuals specifically. And his next verse is, Rejoice! There's this constant application of what you've had in the first half of Philippians, which is the blessed the benefit that you have of following Christ. But that application is rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, and if there's any sisters out there, I think this applies to you too. Whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Whatever you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. The word attitude is not really mentioned specifically. One or two other individuals get a specific mention, but the word attitude is not there. But it's essentially about attitude. In other words, in the midst of what is clearly a real situation, a very, well, I don't want to overread it, overinterpret it, but, it, you know, as they say, there's nae row like a kirk row, and they've certainly had a kirk row here because there's two women who have fallen out. In the middle of that, he's saying, 
Concentrate on the good stuff. Concentrate on the positive stuff. He's saying, amidst the difficulties, your attitude to this is crucial. We had a, a, a Zoom prayer meeting a few nights ago, and I didn't say to anybody, nobody said, let's do some positive things. Things are bad enough. Let's say some nice things. Nobody said that. We were just listing things to give thanks, to uh, pray for. And in the midst of the, because there's obviously a lot of, you know, negative stuff, but one or two people wrote down some positive things. We had handed out some, we had tried to send everybody an Easter card. Uh, because obviously not everybody is like yourself, up to speed in terms of YouTube channels and internet stuff. Um, and f elders had been sort of getting feedback and they were saying, you know, think people were positive about, about the Easter cards. And again, because not everybody can get the, the service on YouTube channel, um, Ross Murray, thanks Ross, had um, burned onto, I think it was a, a DVD, the service that uh, we have on a Sunday morning. And again, folks were saying, this is, you know, really nice, really good. Um, and then there was somebody else who uh, they thought they were going to get sacked and they ended up getting a promotion or a kind of, they, they kept their job. And then somebody else who had already been sacked had got a, had got a new job in the middle of this situation. And it was like in the construction industry where, let's just say, I don't think they're hiring too many people at the moment. Uh, and then somebody else said that they'd had this um, kind of children's ministry. Maybe it was, maybe it was youth. I think it was youth. Uh, it'd be secondary school, so it would definitely be youth. Um, and one of the folks, one of the young folks had invited their friend along to this online thing. And this person who had never been involved in anything in the church had come along. And uh, then somebody else's daughter had been named as a kind of NHS hero by the kind of local um, sort, of, sort of trust hospital area. In other words, when it, it started just as one, but this positiveness, this let's give thanks, just domino affected all the way through and we started giving thanks for all these things because the things had happened. Not because we were kind of like clenching our fists, let's come up with something that's not negative. It had just naturally flowed. I don't want to be accused of being glib. I mean, hopefully they've been, you've seen enough of these um, thoughts for the day. The reality of the difficulties we have is profound. And even if it is something not that significant, as in lockdowns driving you nuts, that's still quite a big deal. I mean, I don't think we can quite call it solitary confinement yet when the sun's as nice as we are and we're having barbecues, but I recognise the difficulties. But what Paul is saying here is this crucial, crucial thing. He doesn't say the word attitude, but he's just making it so clear. In the midst of a big stushy, your attitude is crucial. And so, I don't know, especially at the moment when things, not even, I realise it's not as if loads of people are going back, to, but some people are. And so, we need to be praying for them. But what I recognise is in those situations where things can be a bit challenging, or just if you're still in lockdown and nobody comes to visit because they're not supposed to and the food comes to your door because that's it's supposed to, when you are bored to tears and just can't cope, then I guess maybe it's not always the easiest thing for somebody on a television screen to say, be positive. All I'm saying is, do the thing that helps you as best you can to be positive. I finish with this. There's a guy, an author I really like, a kind of conference speaker, former minister, used to be in Westminster Chapel in uh, London, a guy called R.T. Kendall. And uh, he said he was at this conference and they had, uh, they were driving home with his wife. And basically they decided to 
fill the time by counting blessings. And he said it was a two hour road journey back to their home. And he said it was one of those things where the dominoes started falling. One prayer of thanksgiving, you one we're counting that as a blessing. And he said it was this what was so clear to him by the time he got home was one, they got home with such a positive outlook, as in they were so happy because they had spent two hours almost picking up by default in this wee kind of car where they had to do something. He said, we did this thing that it wasn't necessarily obvious, but they chose to count their blessings. And when they did it, it made such a difference. He said, see, once you start, you can't stop. And there's just so many blessings that you've got. What blessings do you have? What situations can you be the blessing? Because you come in with the attitude that says, I'm looking at the positives. I'm looking at the, the lovely thing. The love. It sounds such a weak word. I'm concentrating on the lovely things. All I'm saying is, whether it's a continuation of lockdown or whether it's easing restrictions and getting back to work or whatever your situation is, your attitude, it may not be everything, but it's such a big component. What situation today can be different because you bring a different attitude to it? Go with God, because I know God goes with you.